absolutely brutal pictures and reports coming out of Syria the last couple days. I'll warn our viewers, some of the pictures that are about to pop up on your screen are extremely disturbing. Uh, the Assad regime, backed by Russia, has just unloaded on the main rebel-held area outside of Damascus. Eastern Ghouta, as the area is known, has faced an intense bombing campaign for weeks now. Hundreds have been killed, but the Assad regime has intensified the shelling in recent days, and at least 98 people, including dozens of children, and women have been killed, adding to the awful situation for the some 400,000 Syrians living there. The United Nations says that there is a severe shortage of food, water, and basic supplies. The French Foreign Ministry is saying the bombing is a serious violation of international law. But like Sandra, we've seen uh, the last few years, there is a real disagreement about what to do. The Assad regime is backed by Iran and Russia. Turkey really cares about the ambitions of the Kurds, and the Trump administration, like the Obama administration, doesn't really know what to do about the Assad regime and the war there against the rebels. London. CBS News radio correspondent Robert Berger has been following the Syrian conflict. He joins us by phone from Jerusalem. Robert, we have seen an unbelievable amount of violence escalating in this particular area. What is behind the surge and the killing? Well, uh, th this suburb of Damascus is basically one of it's the last rebel stronghold uh, near the Syrian capital. And uh, the Syrian uh, government is trying to end this war. It's already got the upper hand, so it wants to drive about 3,000 or so rebels from this area uh, known as Ghouta, eastern Ghouta where there are also something like 400,000 people living. So they have been bombarding, that is the Syrian regime has been bombarding this area with uh, artillery airstrikes, including warplanes and helicopters. Robert, a, a September deal between Russia, Turkey and Iran established eastern Ghouta as a de-escalation zone for six months, meaning it should be a safe place for civilians to live. Why was that agreement not extended? I think that uh, Syrian President Bashar Assad is trying to drive these rebels out. They are a threat. I mean, Damascus is the capital. Most of the rebel strongholds now are, are pretty far away from uh, Damascus. So these uh, rebels are holed up there. And I think uh, the, the world isn't that interested, uh, you know, and, and basically the Russians and the, the Syrian regime can pretty much do what they want uh, without a whole lot of international opposition. And so I think they've decided to, to go ahead with this offensive. And apparently, uh, this is just the beginning. Uh, there's there's wide speculation here in the region that the plan is the, to go in on the ground and uh, to try and kick these, uh, these rebels out of the area. Robert, the pictures that we're looking at are just completely bombed out buildings and terrified children and, and people trying to get out of harm's way. We've heard of the dozens of airstrikes. We've heard hospitals being bombed recently. As you know, next month marks seven years since the Syrian civil war began. Where does this conflict stand? And as you mentioned, if the world isn't that interested, when and how does this come to an end? Well, you know, it, it all changed when uh, the Russians decided to intervene. Uh, we all know that the, that was a, that was that was um, a, you know uh, about two years ago, uh, the the or a year and a half maybe before then. You know, the United States really didn't do anything. Uh, the international community didn't do anything, and the Russians came in and tilted the war that Bashar al-Assad was losing uh, back in his favor. Uh, so it looks like, you know, the Syrian regime, backed by uh, Russia and Iran and Hezbollah in Lebanon, are going to win this war. But still, you know, Syria is still a very fractured country. Uh, there are still some rebel strongholds left, left. ISIS has been pretty much kicked out. but. I mean, looking down the road, I, I think, uh, you know, that uh, Bashar al-Assad is probably going to remain in power, backed by Russia. Iran is going to be a presence there. Mm -hmm. And at some point, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, they'll try and get some kind of um, an agreement in place uh, between the world powers uh, that sort of settles the situation down. 
It's hard to look at those pictures. I, I want to ask you um, about another topic, and we want to talk about Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Last week, Israeli police said they had enough evidence to indict Netanyahu on charges of fraud, bribery, and breach of trust. Now, Israeli police have arrested several members of his inner circle as part of a widening inquiry into whether Netanyahu traded favors for favorable news coverage. Robert, what's the latest on this investigation? Right. You mentioned those two scandals last week. Now, today, it, 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 there are two more, uh, including members of his inner circle. In one of these cases, uh, a member, of, uh, a close associate, allegedly bribed a judge in exchange for dropping a, ca a, a case against Netanyahu's wife, who's suspected of extravagant uh, expenditures, household expenditures at uh, public expense. And the other case involves two associates who allegedly promoted the interests of a top Israeli company, the Israeli telecom company Bezek, in exchange for more positive coverage of Netanyahu on a popular news website. All right, CBS News radio correspondent Robert Berger, we have to leave it there for now. Reporting from Jerusalem, we appreciate your time. Rockets, missiles, airstrikes. Activists fear the renewed bombardment on the besieged opposition area of eastern Ghouta could be the beginning of a large-scale military operation. It seems Russian brokered negotiations to bring about a rebel surrender have so far failed, ending a week of relative calm. Yet again, civilians were the victims. Since the end of December, a stepped-up military campaign killed more than 400 people. At least 100 of them were children. The fear now is that the numbers will only rise if a wide-scale attack begins. The Syrian government and its allies are sending military reinforcements to the edges of the rebel enclave just outside the capital, Damascus. Pro-government media are promising victory in what they say will be a decisive battle. It won't be the first time they will try to storm eastern Ghouta. Past ground offensives were repelled by rebels and people are defiant. They can't enter. We have men who crush stones. They won't be able to capture one inch of Ghouta's land. This is Ghouta, and we have been steadfast for seven years. They tried many times and used all kinds of weapons, but they weren't able to take anything. The Syrian government and its allies haven't taken ground, but over the years they have continuously bombarded residential neighborhoods. The Syrian government and its allies have been recapturing one opposition pocket after another. Eastern Ghouta has been their target for some time now, but more often than not, the government recaptures territory after securing local ceasefire deals that involve opposition fighters and their families evacuated and sent to other rebel-controlled areas, mainly to the province of Idlib in the northwest. So far, the people and rebels of eastern Ghouta are refusing to surrender, but the reality on the ground is becoming harsher. About 400,000 people are trapped there. The violence is only increasing. A child's cry from underneath the rubble. He is alive, civil defense volunteers say. It's not usually the case in eastern Ghouta. Panic in the streets. Fear in people's faces. Neighborhoods flattened. The airstrikes are almost continuous. Towns across eastern Huta are coming under intense fire. Survivors emerge in shock. Children traumatized. Some 400,000 people are trapped in this besieged Syrian opposition enclave. Nowhere is safe. The sound of fighter jets in the skies frightens the population. Im Mohammed and her son Nassim say they can only hope the walls in their home will save them if a shell or an airstrike hits nearby. We have no choice but to stay in our homes despite the airstrikes and shelling. Our building and those in the street are old, so they don't have underground shelters.
The UN says the humanitarian situation is spiraling out of control because of what it calls an extreme escalation of hostilities. Scores of civilians have been killed since Sunday. And the number continues to rise. There are hundreds of injuries as well. Doctors are appealing to the international community to force the government to allow supplies in. We have shortages in medicine and medical supplies because the regime has been hitting this area for weeks. We have had to deal with many injuries. Imagine we no longer have blood bags. The UN is demanding an end to the targeting of civilians, but for the Syrian government and its allies, this is a military tactic. They hope that by inflicting suffering on the population, they will turn against the rebels and force them to surrender. Eastern Ghouta is the last remaining opposition stronghold around Damascus. Comments made by Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov about what he called using the experience in freeing Aleppo in eastern Ghouta are causing concern. The Syrian government regained full control of the city of Aleppo in late 2016 after months of siege and a full-blown military assault that ended in rebels surrendering. The main opposition body, the Syrian National Coalition, is calling the latest wave of violence a war of extermination. It is also condemning what it calls the international silence. This is not the first bombing campaign in eastern Ghouta. Hundreds of civilians were killed in weeks of bombardment earlier this year. Many believe the renewed bombardment could be the final assault. Zena Khudr El Jazeera, Beirut. The UN says that the world is witnessing some of the worst fighting in the Syrian conflict. We completely deplore the, um, the systematic use of violence against the, human, the, the, the civilian populations and the hospitals and schools. Um, these are ex extreme violations of humanitarian law. And uh, all parties, you know, the UN is calling on all parties to de-escalate the violence in, in Syria.